On the Wednesday morning on 3AW, and we have uh, breaking news because uh, we are very grateful. This is obviously uh, hot. We're gr- very grateful for the time of Chief Football Writer for the Age newspaper, Caroline Wilson. Caro, good morning. Good morning, Ross. Yes, it is breaking news. Gary Ablett has signed a five year deal with the Gold Coast. He will be with key Gold Coast officials and perhaps even Coach Guy McKenna at Crown today at 12.30 where he will announce, along with Travis Old, the Gold Coast Chief Executive, that he is coming on board to the club. Geelong has not been told yet, but my understanding is that Chief Executive Brian Cook, who obviously is now facing losing his coach and his best player, will be told this morning by Ablett's manager, Liam Pickering, and I'm told that Ablett was quite keen to get to a few Geelong people as well before the announcement is made at 12.30. Okay. Um, interestingly, it's the Geelong Best and Fairest tomorrow night. So, an interesting day in which to announce it. Any clues, Caro, as to why today? Well, I think there is definitely a staged, managed element to this, Ross. Of course, I think Gary has. I'm certain Gary has known for some time he is going to join the Gold Coast. I believe he will be captain with Campbell Brown as his vice captain. That was my understanding as of last week. The AFL did not want the announcement to overshadow grand final week. Of course, no one could have known that there would be two grand final weeks. Um, Gary, I think at one stage, a bit like Michael Riscatelli at the Brisbane Lions, wanted to go to his best and fairest without having told, without having revealed that he was leaving. That was obviously going to be impossible. Um, again, this is very much a media situation. The Gold Coast want to get maximum and the AFL maximum sell out of this. And I think midweek, with, a, with um, a grand final obviously being played on Saturday, is the time to do it. Um, it's been planned since at least yesterday. Gary has flown back from Hamilton Island. I think John was talking about that before the 7.30 news. And um, he wanted to be there. He wanted to be part of the press conference. And he wanted to be able to talk to John first. Caros, what's the uh, suggestion about the consideration that he's going to receive over this five-year period? How much dough? Uh, John, John, I think it averages out at $1.9 million a year. Um, and I think a lot of that will be paid up front. I mean, the, the word is that around $6 million of that amount will be paid over the first two years. I know Frank Costa has talked about tax considerations and, you know, the, the wealth that you could earn if you stay in Geelong in the longer term. But it's massive money. It's absolutely massive money. It's by far the biggest pay packet of any player in AFL history. It's, a, it's the biggest defection probably in AFL history, except that we have sort of felt it was going to happen for some time. It's all been a matter of timing. Um, it, it's great, obviously great news for the Gold Coast, and a big element of that money, John, will be marketing money because, of course, you couldn't get you know a better player or a better salesman and frontman for your club than Gary Ablett, who's just been such a champion at Geelong. Devastating for Geelong. Um, uh, my belief is Bomber Thompson is definitely going to resign as coach and I firmly believe he'll end up at Essendon with James Hurd despite what he's um, allegedly told Geelong and of course Frank Costa who will remain involved with the club is leaving at the AGM in December in an official role as president so they are losing absolutely three of the key stakeholders of that club over the last decade. Undoubtedly a coup for the Gold Coast Sun and we know Carol it plays big as a story, plays huge story in, uh, in Victoria. How big does it play in Queensland? Oh, I think it's massive in Queensland. I mean, it's certainly big on the Gold Coast. You might remember earlier this year the Gold Coast Bulletin rather cheekily dressed up Gary in a Gold Coast jumper and put it on page one as a bit of a marketing tool. And the Gold Coast was shattered because they thought that might be seen as coercing Gary and that they might have been part of it. This is a Gold Coast club. He's a big name in footy. I mean, he's a mess. The, the name Ablett is a very big name in Queensland as well. You go, I've been to the Gold Coast a few times this year to write stories about the club. It, it really is the classic taxi driver situation, whilst they all ask, is Gary coming? Is Gary coming? And, and you know, people have said they're not going to be that successful in their first few years. I think this absolutely guarantees them. Um, obviously a lot more exposure. And I think that they're not going to be as unsuccessful as people think. I do think it's going to be tough for Gary. I mean, he's obviously not going to have the backup in the midfield that he has now. But um, we'll learn what sort of leader he is and um, we'll learn a lot more about Gary Ablett, I guess, over the next year, just like we will about James Hurd. I don't remember a bigger week of footy news 
starting with the, what happened at the final siren on Saturday afternoon in, in my life. Um, 96900 for Geelong supporters who have any reaction. 96900 We're obviously at this moment trying to speak with Brian Cook or Frank Costa or anyone official in official capacity at Geelong to have a reaction to your exclusive, uh, to your exclusive story, Cara. We know that uh, the AFL are very, very great stage managers. What are the prospects that round one next year would be Gold Coast v Geelong? Well, <laughs> you wouldn't put it past them, although my understanding is the Gold Coast won't play in round one. They'll get a bye in round one for a lot of logistical reasons, including the fact that the ground won't be ready. And um, they want the club to make their debut in Queensland, so it will be at the Gabba. And I think it's well, how about round two? Out. Round two, Gold Coast v Geelong at the Gabba. Yeah, well, it, it, I think that's a great suggestion. Um, certainly, it was going to be Gold Coast v Richmond, but that's been put on ice now because Richmond and um, the Gold Coast are talking about playing a game in Cairns. Yeah, um, I think that's a, a, a very good suggestion. <laughs> Caro, I'm not, I, I don't actually know. Dylan McLaughlin hasn't finished the fixture yet. Uh, uh, Caro, when did he sign? Do you think has he signed in the? Is it has it been a matter? Has he signed in the last week? The last few weeks? Is it a matter of months? Or might he have done it last year? Uh, look, I, I still think that there has been some sort of agreement made late last year. I can't prove it. No one will ever admit that. And Liam Pickering, Gary Ablett's manager, has been saying for months that he still hadn't made up his mind. But Liam Pickering was even saying, I think, on um, radio on the weekend that he hadn't made up his mind, and he clearly had. So I'm a bit sceptical about that, Ross. I don't know when he exactly put pen to paper, but I can tell you he'll be there for five years. And um, if the ink hasn't dried yet, it'll dry in the next few hours. Caro, uh, great, great story, great exclusive, and thank you for uh, giving it to us first. And, of course, it'll be on the Age website. And your rumour file girl didn't do too badly either, Ross. No, she didn't. There was me saying it won't be true um, to our... Uh, <laughs> to- to uh, <laughs> my husband in the background. Yeah, I thought no, I, I, I thought it might be your husband in the background. He'd be very he'd be very happy. I, I guess one one question, Caro. If you, if you look at the team list now for for Geelong, their last appearance being having been slaughtered by Collingwood, and you now look at their team list, um, and you take out Coach Bomber Thompson and you take out Gary Ablett Jr. How good a side does it look? Look, um, I, I think it's, it's devastating for Geelong, but they are a very smart administration and they'll get two first-round draft picks for Gary Ablett. I don't believe they'll exercise that right in this year's draft. I think they'll wait until after Greater Western Sydney finishes with all their early draft picks. And I think they will now get, get right on the front foot of the trade table. I think they'll probably trade one of their premiership players to Greater Western Sydney next year and get another first-round draft pick at least and go into the first clean draft with three first-round draft picks. So the long-term scenario, very good. Um, Joel Selwood, who Bomber Thompson loves for his loyalty, even though he mightn't be being all that loyal himself, will get a pay rise. A few other players will now be re-signed. And they, they, they've got a strategy for this Geelong, and they will go into the trade period far more aggressively than they would have had Ablett stayed. Caro, thank you so much for uh, giving us the call. See you, Ross. See you, John. Caro Wilson, Chief Football Writer, exclusively uh, breaking the story that Gary Ablett is to announce at 12.30 today at Crown that he is signed for five years at $1.9 million per year, which to my un- wobbly mathematics makes the, c- the contract worth $9.5 million. Mm-hmm. Okay. In uh, which case, he, I mean, he, he owes it to himself, his family, his future family to sign, doesn't he?